Hi, my name is Nayland Appena. I'm a specialist gynaecologist in Hamilton in New Zealand. Welcome to my series of educational videos. Today we're going to talk about prolapse. Part 2. Symptoms and Diagnosis of Prolapse What are the symptoms of vaginal prolapse? One of the most general symptoms of all types of vaginal prolapse is the sensation that occurs when the structures or tissues within the vagina fall out of place. It is described by some women as a dragging sensation or feeling that something is coming down. A pressure or protrusion in the area of the sensation may also develop. The severity of the symptoms depend on the advancement of the prolapse. Other general symptoms are painful intercourse, a mass at the vaginal opening, recurrent urinary tract infections, reduction in pain or pressure when a woman lies down. The symptoms that are specific to certain types of vaginal prolapse include constipation, Difficulty in emptying the bowels is the most common symptom of a rectocele. Difficulty in emptying the bladder. This is another symptom secondary to an enterocele, cystocele, urethrocele, vaginal vault prolapse or prolapse uterus. Urinary stress incontinence. This is a common symptom which is often accompanied by bladder neck descent. Difficulty in emptying the bowel. This problem is symptomatic of vaginal vault prolapse, an enterocele or rectocele. Extreme pain during long periods of standing. This may be symptomatic of a vaginal vault prolapse, an enterocele, or a prolapsed uterus. Protrusion of tissue into the vaginal back wall. This is a common symptom of a rectocele. Protrusion of tissue into the vaginal front wall. This is a common symptom with a cystocele or urethrocele. Enlarged vaginal opening. This is frequently observed in combination with vaginal vault prolapse. How is pelvic prolapse diagnosed? For a doctor to make a definite diagnosis of pelvic prolapse, they will need a full patient medical history. They will also need to conduct a detailed physical examination. Each area of the vagina needs to be thoroughly and independently assessed to determine the type and severity of the prolapse. A speculum examination is usually done, both on your back and in the left lateral position. You may also need to be examined sitting in an upright position or standing up and straining so that any prolapse which may not be apparent whilst lying down can be confirmed. As well as helping to determine the best treatment for pelvic prolapse, the following test may also help in assessing the anatomy and function of the pelvic floor, as many women with pelvic prolapse also experience urinary incontinence. Data function tests or urodynamics. This is a diagnostic procedure that helps in testing the ability of the bladder to store and evacuate urine. The first step of this test is known as uroflometry, in which the amount and force of the urine stream are measured. The second step is known as a cystometrogram, which involves insertion of a catheter into the bladder. After this, the bladder is slowly filled with sterile water, and the volume at which the patient develops fullness or the urge to urinate are noted. After the measurement of the bladder and urethra, the patient is instructed to cough or bear down to elicit leakage. The information gleaned from this test may help the surgeon in choosing the appropriate type of surgery. A catheter is usually also inserted into the rectum to measure intra-abdominal pressure at the same time. Q-tip test. During this diagnostic test, a small cotton-tipped applicator lubricated with an anesthetic gel is inserted into the urethra. After this, the doctor asks the patient to strain. If the applicator increases to 30 degrees or above, this may indicate that the urethra descends while straining and indicate the need for anti-incontinence surgery. Pelvic floor strength. During the pelvic examination, the surgeon will test the strength of the pelvic floor and sphincter muscle. This doctor will also evaluate the strength of ligaments and muscles in the structures that support the walls of the vagina, rectum, uterus, urethra, and bladder. These studies help the doctor to figure out whether pelvic floor exercises like Kegel's exercises benefit a woman and help in restoring the strength of muscles of the pelvic floor. I may also use the following imaging test for diagnostic purposes. Ultrasound. In this diagnostic tool, sound waves are used. When sound waves contact a comparatively dense structure like blood vessel walls and fibrous tissue, they are reflected back. These reflected sound waves are then converted into images of the internal structures being studied. These images are used to examine the bladder and kidneys in women with urinary incontinence or the muscles surrounding the anus in women with anal incontinence. They are also used to find any masses that might be pushing the pelvic organs down. 
Magnetic Resonance Imaging, that is MRI scans. In this imaging tool, a powerful magnet is used to stimulate the tissues within the pelvis. These tissues then produce a signal which is evaluated by using a computer. A result, a 3D image of the pelvis is then produced on the screen of the computer by using these signals. Cystourethroscopy. The cystoscope, which is a small tube-like instrument, is lubricated with an anesthetic gel before being inserted into the urethra. The light and camera present in the cystoscope allow doctors to visualize the inside of the bladder and urethra on a television screen. With this procedure, I am able to investigate women with symptoms of frequency, urinary urgency, bladder pain or bleeding during urination. Disclaimer. Without having examined you personally, it is impossible for me to make a diagnosis or advise treatment. All information provided here is generalized and for educational purposes only, and decisions based on this should not be made without consulting your own medical professional. I assume no responsibility for you taking advice rendered here without me having had a physical consultation with you.